So here's the front. Got your power button right in the center. It's got a nice colored screen. You can see your input, output, 100%. And you can see the estimate time of discharge or charge. And then whatever modes you're in, it'll be up there. And then you got your DC section. If you press that, it'll turn your DC section on. You can see it has it right there. You got your 12 volt cigarette lighter right here. And then you also got two 65 watt USB C's and a 15 watt USB A. And then you got your AC button. You can see it turned on. And you got your two AC outlets. These are 700 watt or 1050 watt for surge. Obviously, if you wanted more plugs, you can just put like a extension cord on that thing. And as long as the total power of that extension cord is under 700 watts, it'll be good. So for charging, you got your DC input up here, which is an XT60 plug. So the included cords are this car charger, if you wanna charge it from your car, or you got your XT60 to MC4 cord. So this is what you'd plug into your solar panels. You can put up to 200 watts of solar on this thing. So with 200 watts of solar and a perfectly sunny, beautiful day, you can fully charge this thing at 2.5 hours. Obviously it's not perfectly sunny and beautiful. It's gonna take you a little bit longer than that. Then on the side here, you got your AC input with the ground plug that's included, it has a little screw. If you wanna ground it out, you got your AC cord. There's no power brick, which is really nice. It's all built in. You plug that in there, plug it into your wall or your gas generator. And this thing can fully charge in 70 minutes on turbocharging mode or get to 80% capacity if you're in a rush in 45 minutes. And above that, you got the vent for your fan, which are actually really quiet on this thing. The back, it just says the specs. Then you got your nice solid handle here. And it has a flat top with like a groove, which is nice for putting your phone or whatever on it. It will kind of keep it from falling off. The other side's got your other fan vent. It's got your nice grippy rubber feet on the bottom too, so that it stays put. They also say this thing is double layered. So if you were to drop this by accident, you shouldn't have any issues. I guess it's like 1.5 meter rated. And thankfully it does have lithium iron phosphate batteries in it. So it's safer and a lot longer lasting, which is 3000 cycles down 80% capacity. You can also operate this thing down down to negative four Fahrenheit. So if you like winter camping like me, you're good to go. This thing also has UPS mode. If you don't know what that is, basically if you had this thing plugged in at home, you had your computer, medical devices, refrigerator plugged into this, stuff that you basically don't want to stop running. If the power did go out, it would instantly transfer from using your grid power to using battery power so that basically your refrigerator and all that would continue to run. And it also comes with a five-year warranty. You can also operate this from Blue Eddy's app. You just click on the AC50B, you can see we're at 98% state of charge. If I was charging it from the sun or your car, it would show PV power coming in. If I was charging from the grid, it would show that grid power coming in. And this is your DC output and your AC output. So we can just turn those on from that little switch there. So now the DC inverter is on, you can see. And if we turn on the AC inverter, now the AC inverter is on. So if we had stuff plugged in or whatever, it would start charging right now. And then here you got battery information. So it shows your state of charge there and then your batteries in standby if you were charging it or discharging it would obviously tell you then it shows your information about your battery pack one up in the top right you can uh you name it if you want to rename it if you want to share the device so that other people can connect with their phone and then you could set a password for it some kind of emissions thing if you want to display it on your home display you can turn that on and this is your charging you got three options you got silent which is basically going to be the slowest charge but it's going to be like dead silent like say if you're really bothered by little fan sounds you could do that you got your standard charging or you got your turbo charging like i said that was fully charged in 70 minutes it also has eco mode which is actually a sweet option so basically if you're charging something and you know that after a certain amount of time it's going to be fully charged and you don't want the inverter loss of this running all night because you can't physically turn it off you can set the parameters on this to whatever you want and basically it'll just shut off after everything's charged and done all right let's start testing stuff on this so right now we just got my phone plugged in so that's dc so my phone is pulling about 12 watts right now it says it would run for 27.5 hours with this running obviously it's not going to take that long to charge my phone I'm trying to charge my flashlight up here that's a massive flashlight you guys always see me use it says seven watts so it would charge it for almost 40 hours at 97 percent plug my massive shop fan here into this this thing isn't necessarily really meant for super high power devices, but it actually can run them. So let's turn the AC on there. Let's turn this bad boy on. We'll try it on low first. Pulling about 82 watts. So it says it'd run for 4.6 hours. We got medium, 4.5 hours on medium. 
about four hours on high. You guys know the massive power stations I usually have here. Look how cute this is. It fits so nicely. So let's turn my lights on here and see how much power it pulls. Cause we got DC and AC lights in there. It says it would run my lights for 29 hours at 97%. And these AC lights obviously use quite a bit more and I don't run the lights for 29 hours straight. So during bed, obviously I turn those off. If we turn the AC lights off, it's saying 99 hours. So basically more than the max. That's my like purple LEDs. So obviously if you want lights to run forever, just make sure you get some LEDs, specifically like DC lights. Warm out here. Let's try to uh, cool off a little bit. Let's grab some. Hopefully not melted. Nope, not melted ice. Put it on max mode. We got the mister on. Turn the light. We don't want pink. That's a cool color. There we go. We'll do blue. So it's not even registering how many watts. So it's probably really low. But it says it'll run it for 40 hours straight. Any of these estimates are all based off of not having any solar charging. Because if you plug this into a 200 watt solar panel, I mean, it would run this for an eternity, um, including all those lights and, and smaller devices like charging your phones and stuff. Now, as you guys know, these electric heaters pull up a ton of power. This one's actually a really small one. It only pulls 500 watts, which is still an insane amount. But let's turn that on. Let's really start pushing this thing. Ooh, it already went over 600. What's going back down? Ooh, that's so crazy. Why is it pulling so many watts? Well, guys, this pulled up to 800 and some almost 900 watts. It's supposed to stay under 500, but obviously while it's cranking up, it pulled more. So that does show that 1,050 watt surge is uh, doing its job. Obviously this is more what it's made for is like charging stuff like this. So you can see it's charging my drone batteries and my drone remote right now. And it's saying it run for 11.7 hours. It's pulling 21 watts right now. Time to try my massive light. I love to use this thing. I think it goes like 15 feet in the air. It'll light up the whole area. So let's plug this thing in and see how long it would run. Plug this bad boy into the 12 volt spot. So I've got my massive light plugged in. It's pulling uh, 17 watts right now. So it says it'd run over 20 hours. But let's turn this thing on. There's a low, medium, let's just go to high. Pull the max. So it's saying it's pulling uh, 84 watts and it will run for 4.8 hours at 94%. Well guys, it's lunchtime and I'm getting pretty hungry here. So we're gonna actually push this thing to the max. I'm gonna use this toaster. I'm gonna use it twice because I want peanut butter and jelly toast, four pieces, and I want some caffeine. So we're gonna have some coffee here. So let's see if this little power station can do it. If it can, that is very impressive because these things pull a ton of power. Let's see what happens. Woo! 680 watts and it is really hot out here. So hopefully it doesn't overheat because we are you know, almost at 700 watts. So we'll see if we can have some coffee and toast out here. That would be awesome. Woo! Dang, we almost overcooked it a little bit. Let me turn that down. But it definitely did it. We're down to 85%, but that's okay. We have some solar right now. We had 200 watts of solar. You know, we make our lunch or whatever, and we just charge it back up. Let's get our jelly out here. There's our next toast. We're down to 79%, but that's okay. We got our toast. We got plenty for coffee, I'm sure. Got our good toast we're about to eat, but might as well get this coffee maker going here. That's gonna pull the most power. This water is actually really cold, so it might take even more power to heat it up, but oh well. So we're at 79%. We're about to turn this coffee maker on. There it goes. Basically about the same as a toaster, 670 watts. I personally think that the inverter size and the capacity size of this and all the features that this thing has 
is literally perfect for most people, at least that are getting started or that want to take this thing camping or even vehicle camping for lights and a lot of stuff. Well, coffee's done. We're at 60%. Enjoy the journey.